just want to just kind of housekeeping and just make sure that we're not going to fall on that flame and then do some fire walking. We're not, that's not included in the program. Uh, but what we're going to do now in a very safe, uh, <laughs> as safe as possible way is honor the directions. And so we'll kind of open the space for that to happen. So I'll invite you, if you feel so comfortable and moved to do so, to stand and face the east, which is this direction here. Jason is going to be reading and opening up each of, each of the directions with a prayer, with an invocation. And um, I'm going to do the, the rattle. You're welcome to use your drum also if you want to. And Chris is going to be doing her drum as well. And in between each of Jason's invocations to the different direction, We'll be singing Wende Aho. Wende Aho is the Cherokee morning song, and its me its meaning is "I am of the Great Spirit." I am of the Great Spirit, so that everything in me, of me, around me, through me, as me, is recognized as the divine. So we're going to start with Jason invoking the East. Okay. We face and thank the East where the sun rises and our spiritual strength lies. We know and honor that the East is associated with the dawn and with new light and the eagle. We face the East now and think of new beginnings of hope and of creativity. When they are where we find the warmth of the sun with its strength and power. We know and honor that this direction teaches us about the child within. The animal in this direction is the coyote, and we are reminded to have a sense of humor and laugh at our child selves, not to take everything so seriously, and to be good and easy with the child within. sun sets and honor that west is the direction of peace and reflection with the animal guide that is the bear. We draw upon the strength of our experiences and introspection, the guidance we find when we are still and go within. to wisdom and where we connect to the higher self's purpose and intention. The animal guide for the north is the sacred buffalo and it is here that we seek renewal. We face the north now and ask for blessings of peace, good health, and abundance for the new year. When they are that there is a higher power that protects us and watches over us as we continue our continue our, our spiritual path. When they are
We touch the earth to remind us to stay grounded on our spiritual path as we live day to day in practical reality. When day I hold, when day together as an honor within our own sacred space and we say together amen 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 aho aho ase ase blessed be blessed be and so it is and so it is om shanti 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 om shanti 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 om Excellent. Mm -hmm. Yes. Welcome home. Mm. So I've asked Kadisha mm -hmm. to read this as an opening prayer for us. And all everything's been an opening prayer. Indeed. Ready? Yes. Okay, we believe that the, the mind of God governs all things. We believe that the divine intelligence governs and guides and counseling and advising, causing us to know what to do under every circumstance and at all times, that we will own but trust it. Mm -hmm. I am divinely helped, guarded, and guided. Well, that was by Ernest Holmes. Uh, I'm always led, always guided. There is no desert, no grief, no wasteland too devastated for the presence of God to find me. I'm beloved, I am cherished and seen. I'm always heard, even when my prayers fall on seemingly silence, they are heard. God is with me always. I'm in God's presence and God is, in, is present in me. If I open, my, open to guidance, I'm always led, always helped. I can hear the voice of God within me. I can hear the urging of my soul. When I cry out in anguish as being abandoned, even in that despair, the voice of God whispers within me if I will only listen. So I'm going to invite us to center in this knowing that one source, the divine intelligence, is always with us, is us, as us, works through us. And the centering chant is la ila, la la, there is no God but God. Oh, uh -huh. 
Namaste again, and welcome to the Oneness Temple. And we have sacred celebration here the last Friday of the month. And we also have Kirtan, which is um, the first and the, the third Wednesday of every month. And so I welcome everyone, and how wonderful to have this intimate little group. Yeah, it's really wonderful. And so I thought that we would talk about tonight, and, and what we do here at the Oneness Temple is that we have these sacred dialogues. So I, I'll open up a little bit and share a little bit of, of my understanding of the message, and then we share for dialogue with, with each other. And tonight, we're gonna talk a little bit about exploring ways to communicate with the divine. Exploring ways to communicate with source and what that means. And so first I thought, well, you know, here's, so here's the professor, <laughs> the professor in me that says, okay, so what does the word communicate mean, right? So what is communication? It's a process, a process of receiving and giving messages from the sender and the sender sends a message and the receiver receives the message. So it's about messages and it's about there being it's kind of like two parties, if you will, the sender and the receiver. At any given time, the sender can still be the receiver and the receiver can be the sender, you know what I mean, right? Mm -hmm. So then I thought communication with the divine or communication with the one source or source or divine intelligence, God, for lack of a better word, goddess, all that is. This communication is, a, is sort of really needed for a relationship. Like, so like when we have a relationship, one with another, communication is key, right? Mm -hmm. And communication is key to intimacy, right? I mean, we communicate with each other all the time, some of us through Facebook, some of us through text messages, <laughs> some of us through email. Um, and our communication these days gets smaller and smaller and quicker and quicker and we don't have time and we can't even spell out the word Y-O-U. Right? It's you in our text message. Quick and easy, in and out. But to nurture a relationship one with another, communication is key. And more than that, intimacy is key. You know, today I was, my, my beloved partner had come home from a long day at work and we were talking and then all of a sudden the phone rang and I picked it up and it was my mother. <laughs> Hi mom. <laughs> and I hurt her feelings, I hurt Chris's feelings because she was talking to me. She was in the middle of having a having communication with me and having intimacy <laughs> with me. Yes. And I got distracted. And I was talking to somebody else who I also love and adore. That's not the point. The point was the communication had been hampered. And I wasn't really being a good listener. So I, I wasn't being a good receiver because she was actually sending mess, a message to me and I wasn't quite listening. I was distracted. And it doesn't matter. I mean, it's wonderful that it was my mother. And at least, thank God, it was my mother and it wasn't somebody else. But still, bottom line is that for there to be communication and for, that, for there to be nurturing of a relationship, it's really important to A, be present, to be present, to give that time, to take that time, to sort of be disciplined. See, I wasn't disciplined today. I was like distracted, easily distracted, like a child, you know, with, with a rattle. It's like, whoa, what is that? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. So you're talking to me, <laughs> you know? So it takes discipline to communicate in a relationship. It takes discipline to be intimate. You have to be vigilant. You have to nurture it. So in the context of communication with the divine and exploring pathways to the divine and how do we connect and how do we, be, how do we become intimate, 
with the divine. I guess first it's kind of important, and I was thinking about this. Okay, so what is the divine? What does that mean? You know, like when I, I grew up, I grew up in a Catholic, uh, Catholic home. So my foundation was Catholic. And we believed God is almighty, and God is there, and I am here. And I kind of pray to God, right? I pray to God or ask God for stuff, or if I'm really good, God will give me stuff, maybe. <laughs> but it's this dualistic notion. And that's not to say that that's not right or correct, or that's a belief. But there's also a belief of non-duality. That the divine is not really separate from me. So if the divine is not separate from me, and, and the divine is not just in me, but that I'm in the divine, right? So because I'm always like thinking, okay, where's the soul? Is the soul in here? Is the soul in between my eyebrows? Is the soul behind me? Where is the divine? The divine in me. You know, the divine in me recognizes and honors the divine in you. So where is that divine? Where is it? Is it, in, is it in somewhere inside me? I am in the divine. So there's nowhere that the divine is not, is the point. The divine is in and of everything. This absolute divine intelligence, this one source. So if that's true, so he has, this is the scientist, right? So if that's true, then how do I communicate with that? See, if there's really no this and that, how do I communicate with it? So to make it a little easy, because you know, we have these little brains. Yes, we haven't used all of our potential, it's true, but our little brains cannot grasp the magnificence of this divine. The Tao talks about, the Tao Te Ching talks about, if you think you understand, you've lost it. <laughs> Don't try to understand it. Just try to experience it. I think like we all kind of know when we experience the divine. When we're aware, when that aperture is open, we kind of know it. Sometimes I see it in my dog's eye. Today, today Shanti, our, our little Jack Russell, was floating on a floaty on a noodle in the pool oh, yeah. and like leaning her, hand, her oh, little cute. claws on this like floaty. And she was kind of balancing herself just, just really sweetly and she was just like in bliss. She was in bliss. And it gave me this feeling and I think that's a glimpse of communication with the divine. And there's thousands of stories like that that we all have of when we really connect with that which is the divine and all that is the divine. So to make it easy for myself, because I have a, a little brain and I'm not that smart, I, have, I suffer from I know itis, <laughs> but I'm not that smart. Or maybe, maybe I'm too analytical, but anyway. To keep it simple, let's say, supposing, supposedly, there is a higher self in us, a witness. This, you know, this, this entity, this thing, this being, this, this energy, whatever this is, this divine intelligence that sort of watches me. Like when I'm asleep, right? When I'm asleep and totally in deep sleep, I've not died. My higher self is kind of like off to the side, kind of watching me. When I'm in meditation, when I go within, it's not my mind, it's the higher self that's sort of this witness. So what if this communication thing this communication with the divine, this intimacy with the divine, was about the, the smaller self, the little grace. You know, in this embodiment, that's who I am. 
disembodied. For those of us who believe in other lives and reincarnation, and we know that there are many, many other embodiments. In this embodiment, my name is Grace. So what if the little Grace was kind of asking for guidance from the higher self? Some people might not dig that, so some people might understand it differently, and they might understand it like, I am asking for guidance from God. That works too. Everybody speaks a different language. I'm an interfaith minister, you know? And so my, my thing, my gig is, and my philosophy is that there is one truth, and it comes in different languages, with different symbols, with, with different dictionaries. But there's one truth. And a lot of us who are of like minds believe that there is one source, this divine intelligence. Hindus in Sanskrit say sat chit ananda, sat, which is existence. This energy that has always existed never was born, never is going to die, always is. Sat, chit, knowledge. Not this kind of knowledge I just pointed to my head. Not this kind of knowledge, but divine intelligence. The knowledge and the intelligence that, that gets the planet to spin on its axis around the sun. And none of us fall off. <laughs> the divine intelligence that operates our systems, all of the systems within our bodies, that pumps my blood right now. I'm not doing that. That's a divine intelligence that's, that's doing that, because I'm not willing that to happen. And we can go on and on. The scientists can, can tell us the divine intelligence, where it exists and how it exists, and it's mind-blowing. And Ananda, bliss, not joy that, you know, comes in things, in people. We all, we all have joy when we see each other. When you walk through the door and I see you, get excited. <laughs> Happy to see you. I, I, I love you. I love seeing you. But that's not the joy. That's not the bliss of the divine. That's just a glimpse of it. Because that's kind of like in the jacket of humanness. Because we're going to disappoint. We're going to disappoint each other. There's going to be a, a Friday, the last Friday of the month, that you're not going to come. <laughs> and I'm going to be annoyed. <laughs> I'm going to be disappointed. You're going to disappoint me. Things are going to change. We change. Everything's changing. I'm going to die. You're going to die. But there's something that's never going to die, and that's the energy. That's the one source. That's the, the divine nature that is and always will be. So that being said, in a practical realm, how can I increase, enhance the intimacy with the divine? How can I communicate with the divine? I'm going to share with you a couple of things that worked for me. And then I'm going to open it up to you to share with us what you think, what you do. You know, we're really talking about developing a practice, developing a spiritual practice. Some of us have one already. Some of us are starting to become introduced to one. Some of us have been thinking about one, but don't know how to start. So the first thing I was thinking of is, in terms of communication, is me sending the message to the divine. The smaller self, the ego self, the human self, communicating and sending the message to the one source. So how do we do that? Some people do it through prayer, formal prayer, where they read a prayer. And whether you are Muslim, or Hindu, 
or Catholic or Jewish or Sikh. So many different faith practices, so many different belief systems. We did one just now, a Muslim prayer, which is part of the Shahada, mm -hmm. right? There is no God but God. It's just one part of a bigger, yeah. a bigger prayer. Hail Mary, our Father. Blessing over the bread that said it at every Sabbath service. Whatever it is, there's formal prayers, there's informal <coughs> prayers. I do this thing called Japa every day. And here's a word, religiously. I do it every day. My guru gave me um, a mantra, and I say it every day, pretty much without fail for two years, every single day. It's 108 beads. This is, these are prayer beads, mala beads. Buddhists use them. Hindus use them. Muslims use them. Catholics use them. They're called rosary beads. You see? Does it, one truth, it's about vibration. Doesn't even matter what you're saying. It almost doesn't even matter what your words are. I'm saying something in Sanskrit. Om Soham, Ham Saha, Paramam Saha, Paramat Ma, Chinmayo, Ham Sach, Tananda Swarapu, Ham Soham, Ham Saom. What does that mean? It means I am that, basically. It means I am that. What is that? Not I am all that. <laughs> I am that. I am that. I am that. I am the divine. I am the divine. I am divine. I'm not this body. I am divine. I say that 108 times. It's about a vibration. It's about setting an intention. It's about an awareness and an acknowledgement that this lower self or smaller self or ego self seeks intimacy with the divine. Another thing is chanting, kirtan, we love that. Drumming, Salah taught us the Sufi dance. So beautiful and so intimate and so connecting. And the Sufis whirl. So there's all these different ways of worship. Some people call it worship, but there's, it's all about invoking, invoking the divine. It's all about raising a vibration. It's all about an awareness. It's all about an acknowledgement. And sometimes I really, even though I believe in non-duality, even though I believe that, sometimes my Catholic little child just wants to say, oh, could you please help me with this one? <laughs> just this one time, you know? And I said, what, so what? It's about an invoking and an awareness that I am not this body and I might need some help. I might need some help from some guidance, from some guides, from some spirit guides. We did one day Aho, you know, we did this Cherokee morning song, I am of the great spirit acknowledging all of the directions and above and below and within. Nature, acknowledging nature. Chris placed uh, on the altar here, um, Gaia, Mother Earth. Today is the blue moon. Tonight is the blue moon. <laughs> <laughs> to communicate with the divine, to just go sit outside and just watch the moon just watch the moon and absorb the moon. So there's all of these ways and different ways and paths to intimacy with the divine, but there's also the receiving part. So that was all the sending part, the sending message part. And there's the receiving part, meditation, listening, being disciplined with that. In the same way that we need to be disciplined in our intimacy with each other and to be vigilant with that and to not take each other for granted, in the same way not to take for granted the divine and the intimacy and the relationship with the divine. So there's, you know, there's so many times where 
I'm a mess up here. I'm trying to plan my life, do my thing, and do my work, do my ministry, do my... I have a plan, I have a plan, I have a plan, because I'm so good at it. <laughs> but then there's another plan that I'm not listening to. I have to get still to do that. The great master Jesus said, be still. He just said that. He's like two words, you know. Be still. Stop. Stop. Whatever you're doing, whatever you're thinking, whatever you're planning. We're human, we're human doings. We're not human beings. We do, do, do. We don't, we're not being. So be still. And the second part of what he said was, and know that I am God. So be still and know that I am not this body. Really not. And all of its material things. Be still and know that I am the divine. I'm here. And so lastly, what I want to just say is that I have a ritual, I try to have a ritual anyway, of a lighting of a candle, a burning of incense, if you can tolerate the smell of incense, some people can't. Some people are allergic and some people have asthma. But there's liquid smudge, which works too. <laughs> Whatever it is that works for you, I'm tactile, so I like to touch things, feel things, burn things, I like that. <laughs> I like drama, theater, <laughs> performance. You know, I like that kind of stuff. So I need that. This is small-minded. But anyway, <laughs> whatever your ritual is, I want to I want to invite you and encourage you, and I want to encourage me, and wanna, I want to remind me how important it is to seek intimacy with the divine, how important it is to be vigilant, to be disciplined, to pay attention, to not get distracted to really enter into communication with all that is. And to do that in whatever works for you, whether it be lighting a candle, burning incense, listening to a meditation tape, doing formal prayer, whatever it is, but do something every day. Some people live prayer. They're living prayer. So they don't have a certain time during the day. So I want to invite you now to just kind of share, if you feel so moved to share with us what it is that you do, or what is your practice, or what do you think about this thing about getting intimate with the divine? Thank you, Grace. It's an honor to be here tonight. You know, you, you say you, you said something that's like that's my favorite expression. You know, like usually, I, I, my time with the divine, I call it divine intimacy. Whether it's a prayer, it's a meditation, it's something. But to me, it's like a divine intimacy. And you said it all. I think. Uh, you made some about communication. I, I I believe that communication for me is like just sharing knowledge, the knowledge that you talked about just the infinite knowledge. So it's just by, sometimes by being still in my meditation, I don't have to do, it's everything is there. It's when I'm still, I just become aware of it. And the old saying, when, when, when a pupil is, is, is ready, the teacher appears, when, when, when I'm still, everything just shows up. It's already there, but when I'm distracted in my mind, you know. Uh, and I pray, and sometimes I just get out of the way, and I don't ask for anything. And I'm just, I'm right there with the, the God of my understanding, you know, with the high power, with the source. With the, and sometimes I have to ask and I have to beg, which is okay. <laughs> and uh, it doesn't, it, in my mind, it separates me from, from, from the uh, divine, just only in my mind. But there's no way I could be separated. It's only... In my mind, sometimes I'm separated. And it is okay to ask sometimes. It's like, uh, how do I explain that? It's like we're all part of the same body. 
And, and sometimes, you know, my back says, I'm hurting, do something, <laughs> you know? I can't sleep, or my hand is aching, or my eye says, you know, scratch this part. It doesn't, so it, it, even though we're one, but it's okay to share that knowledge, we just we share it. So uh, I feel it is okay to pray, and it is, it, it's important to me. It just, it just gets me out of, the, out of the way to do some humility and stuff. And, um, and it's really amazing, it's, it's, it's true intimacy, because I, I, I heard someone explain it before, the, you know, uh, and, and that touched my heart the way they explained it to me. It says that God only has, only says one thing, and he says, I love you. And if I listen in everything I do, that's all I could hear, I love you. If I, when I eat a strawberry, and I close my eyes and I taste it, it's like God telling me I love you. Tasted that strawberry when I hold my loved one, when when I see creation, she smiles. When I come in, I guess God says I love you through His creation. It's, it's in everything. So, um, do I take a formal or, or time to pray every day? I, I don't always do that. I feel like you said, like I put all, everything you do, and the best prayer that I can give to God my understanding is the way I live my life, the way I treat other people. I believe that every thought, every action, every feeling is a prayer. And, and I believe that all prayers are answered. So I, I try to be careful what I think and what I say. You know, I try. But I fall short many, many times. You know. um, I ask for help a lot. I do. Uh, sometimes, and I have rituals at times. And rituals are important. For me, it's just I'm a creature of habit. Somehow, it just it gets me right there. It's like when you, when you, when you put like a little uh, uh, shopping list on your refrigerator, on your refrigerator, so you don't forget things. To me, rituals are like that. You know, I leave my keys in a certain place, so I know I have my keys when I leave. So those rituals just remind me. You know what? It's time just to get out of the way and, and appreciate. You know that divine intimacy. And I just, I'm, I'm, I have a sore throat and I'm really, I, I, I'm, uh, but a lot of healing is there. You know? I, I believe that healing comes by being with the divine. I believe that wellness is there when I'm with the divine, you know. Nothing can go wrong when I'm with the divine. It's like when I'm separate, that's when illnesses come, mental and physical and spiritual illnesses and maladies and stuff. I believe that. Saying prayers, like, it's, it's not always necessary. I'm learning something in my journey, helping with healing with others and stuff. I, I used to think that it was very important for me to say a prayer while I'm doing healing on other people. But it's just, I'm learning that when I do that, I am saying that I'm separate from the divine. And I need to say a special prayer in order for, for me, to, for the healing to happen. And I'm learning now, I don't even need to do that. It's already there. When I accept it, the healing comes much easier, and it's already there, you know. Um, and and uh, th there's a story that uh, I was sharing with Trishna uh, a while back about uh, how uh, there was this rabbi that his his uh, uh, his tribe, his people, that was going through some difficulties and challenges. And he remembered that in the ancient times and you know, the older times, there was a and the rabbi before him. He used to go to a specific forest and specific bush and, and say a specific prayer and things would be okay. And he couldn't remember, he could remember the prayer and the forest, but he couldn't remember which bush. And he, he just went there and says, God, I'm in the forest and I know the prayer, but I don't know where, please help me. And he got the help he needs. The one after him, he couldn't remember uh, which forest. <laughs> and he said, he said there, he says, God, I don't remember what forest, but, but I know the prayer, I'm gonna say it. And then later on in time, and then the rabbi came and says, I don't know the prayer, I don't know where the forest is, and I don't know the bush, but I know yet. Yeah, yeah. Rabbis before me helped them when they asked you for help, and they got the help that they need. So I'm learning, it's not really, it's, it's here, you know. Thank you, I love you. I'm so glad to be here. Um, I can't really say that I pray. 
Well, I guess it's kind of like silent prayer, but I don't even think it's prayer. I get, I get silent and I get still. And at first I get, if it's at night, it's with the stars and the moon. Mm -hmm. If it's in the morning, it's with the ducks and the iguanas and the waves of the lake and, 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 and um, the enmeshment with the trees. And um, the only thing I ask for is guidance. You know, that's, that, that's just it. And, and I do it, with, you know, with him. And, uh, you know, I do that for like a couple of hours. I have to. Mm -hmm. I remember I went to Sarasota mm -hmm. and I would have a certain place Preacher habit that I do this meditation in a certain time that I, you know, to get my hours because when my husband wake up, he starts talking. So I get up early so I can have the silence. And I went to Sarasota and um, I was out of my element. And uh, I just get to focus with this tree and go within and just get still. You know, because I was out of, you know, I was not with my iguanas and ducks and stuff. But, uh, Basically, I do more meditation than anything. That's what helps me, just getting into my mind. Thank you. Anybody else? I do have a ritual in the mornings, most mornings, not every morning. And I enjoy, I have an altar in my room that I've set up and it has important items to me, things that represent something to me. And I'm also very tactile. I light a candle, I um, use essential oils, and I anoint myself in all of my chakras, with the oils associated with each chakra to open up the energy. I do breathing, I chant, I meditate. So I, I speak, and I usually speak praise and gratitude. I don't so much ask for things as open myself to learning and understanding my, what my higher power wants for me. Because I have lots of plans. And all day long I have desires. And I believe my desires are part of what makes me human. They're sparks of desire and that's what keeps me moving forward and keeps me expanding. And so I have my desires. And the way, one of the ways that I listen is when, if I have a desire and I find it not working out and perhaps I'm feeling frustration or I'm feeling anger or I'm feeling upset over this desire, that's an indication, that's God speaking to me. Anytime I'm not in joy or I'm not in bliss or I'm not in love, God's speaking to me. And it's my way of saying, oh, right, so I've just got to get more in alignment. So what will it take here? And, you know, perfect example the other day, I had a plan to leave the house by a certain time. I was running behind my schedule. I started to feel anxious. Oh, dear, it's not going to work out. What am I going to do? And then I just reminded myself, oh, Rachel, relax. Do what you want to do. Take care of yourself. Put your self-care first. The timing will be perfect when you I relaxed, took it easy, did what I needed to do to take care of myself. But the timing was perfect when I arrived. And that's God speaking to me in small ways throughout the day. And I do set time aside in the mornings and I do a little, um, I have uh, something I do in the evenings also before I go to sleep and also throughout the day just to, to stay in touch. And that brings me lots and lots of, of everything, peace, joy, abundance, everything that I want, as long as I stay in love. Thank you. Great, thank you. Oh, I have been <clears throat> a spiritual seeker all my life, raised by an atheist, but I've had my moments like all of us have, when we have that sudden moment of transcendence. And it's happened all through the history of mankind. Um, Plato is my favorite philosopher. Everybody knows that I'm a bit of a Plato nut. But anyway, he said, love is the longing to return to the oneness from which we came. 
And he said, when that feeling comes to him, he said, first a shudder runs through me, and then the old awe creeps over me. And we've seen it all through the history of great thought, the Buddha under the Bodhi tree. I'm awake, I'm awake. After years and years and years of struggling, I'm awake, I'm awake. And we have great scientists who've suddenly gotten that. And that suggests to me that we are two-natured beings. Right now, we may be, in a sense, encapsulated in this envelope. But there's a part of us that transcends to the eternal consciousness. And when that happens, I think that's the future of, our man, of mankind, is that we're going to have that next quantum leap. And we no more be struggling with one another and we'll understand the oneness of all. And you know what? That two nature being, forgive me, but I wrote a little poem about that. I looked out my window, wondering why I came to be. But there in the window, only my eyes stared back at me. In the distance, the rain turned the forest to gray. But the face in the window cried out in dismay. Who are you, it said, staring back at me. And a voice whispered back, I'm the you you can't see. But who is the one that is asking, who am I? It's not that body in the window. It's the one who is asking, why? So I think that we all have that other self. And at moments, and I pray, by the way, every night, even though I call myself an agnostic, <laughs> Dead with Socrates. This I know that I know nothing. <laughs> but at least I know that I don't know. So he was a seeker too, you know? And those moments of enlightenment, I do pray every night and have those moments, transcendent moments at times, when I'm suddenly connecting with my grandmother, who was in New York at that time, one time when I was much younger, and I knew that she had a stroke. How did I know that? Because there's a oneness. That oneness that, that Plato had mentioned and many of the other great philosophers and spiritual teachers. So, next. I hear a lot of words and I know one thing. We are all one in the mind of that energy that created us. That's all we need to know. That's all we need to hold in consciousness, but hold it tight, because there's so much tries to get between us and that truth. I'm very old. I know that truth, and I know it for all of us. All of us must know it for ourselves. Mm. Before I do the meditation, I would just want to share. I, um, if I only have a moment, I like to do a visualization that centers me, which is that of a stone dropping at the, a great depth from the ocean. And it goes down, down, down through the waves until it reaches the tranquil bottom. And that's how I kind of get myself into that place of stillness where um, I can, can be one with my higher self. So if I have more time, I love to um, celebrate the divine by mushy, mushy, mushy language. I like to call her, um, sometimes I'll call, you know, I'll talk to the most divine, luscious, beautiful, amazing, intimate, intelligent, goddess who creates beauty everywhere, to be able to name her, to be able to, I have Gaia on the altar here, but you know, the feminine aspect of God is there's so many goddesses, so I'll call Lakshmi and I'll, I'll call um, Ra and I'll call all sorts of goddesses because the divine is an aspect, um, all those aspects of energy. Um, are just wonderful, and, and dancing is a form of prayer. And when we um, do our visualizations and we soften our hearts and we create that feeling of, of unconditional love and we 
focus on the love in our hearts, we communicate what the divine I feel. Um, but that's where I communicate with the divine. And music, um, singing to the divine, singing to the beloved helps us connect. And I have a crystal bowl, and I really think that the vibrations of chimes and crystals help, help us connect because it is all energy and we are in a cosmic soup, <laughs> you know? So we get, we get to tickle the web, you know, we get to use our minds to connect um, to the love that's on the planet. We get to pray and to elevate energy on the planet. So there's lots and lots of ways and, and um, you know, I think honoring the elements of the earth and connecting to the earth energy is really important when we communicate with the divine, but really to be able to just love the um, love existence is, is for me communicating with the divine. Should I do the meditation? So I want to invite you to get comfortable in, in your chair, in your chairs or on the floor if you want to lay down. And I'm going to lead a visualization, meditation, where we get to connect with our higher self, which is our divine, beloved self. That's the divine, light, beautiful self that is our essence. So breathe deeply and breathe out stress and relax. Breathe in peace. Nice deep breath. Exhale all tension. If you notice tension in your body, breathe into it and relax. Let yourself be fully in this moment, present, here, now, safe at the serenity room. Feel yourself ready and willing to open to the healing energy in the room and in the meditation. Imagine that you are in a beautiful garden filled with flowers and trees, plants. It is exquisite here and the sun is shining in a brilliant blue sky. There's a gentle breeze and a pleasant aroma the air is soft and silky on your skin. In a state of deep peace, you open your heart. You feel the center of your body soften and open to all that is. You notice a path winding through the garden and you begin to walk it, keenly aware of the beauty everywhere around you. You notice the flowers everywhere, beautiful trumpet flowers of yellow and blue and white. You see gorgeous purple orchids, roses, the hair is filled with their fragrance. You now see there is a pond and you are drawn to it. It is sparkling with light as if diamonds fill the surface. The pond is surrounded by crystal rocks of all sizes everywhere. And you notice that you can see to the bottom of the pond are crystals of every color lay.
You step into the pond and the water is silky and sweet. And you submerge yourself in this healing water. And you are purified and cleansed. Take a moment to feel the cleansing and healing effects of this crystal water. And then you emerge, stepping out into the sun. You find that you're miraculously dry and filled with a sense of well-being. You see a being coming towards you and you feel a thrill of recognition. As you know, this is your highest self coming closer, your divine self. And they come closer and closer until finally you meet. Your higher self embraces you and you are filled with their unconditional love. They invite you to sit with them. You feel safe and clear, and you are awed and humbled by the beauty of this self, this core essence of you. You are enfolded by unconditional love, and it feels wonderful. You know that this divine and blessed self sees you in your totality, sees your goodness, your struggles, your suffering, and your joy. This highest self begins to talk to you, tells you that you are divine love divine light and that you are precious and an integral part of divine creation. This most compassionate high self says to you, I rejoice that you are reaching inward and connecting to me. source to the one spirit that unites all that is. It is holy to experience and feel the ultimate peace and the divine joy that resides within. I wish to hear all that you would share. You share, you share with this, this divine one your appreciation. You share your visions for yourself and your loved ones. You share your visions for the planet. Your divine, most loving, wise, and compassionate self looks deeply into your eyes and into your soul. You feel great relief and great joy as they tell you you are healing. You are healing now. You feel a deep knowing that this is true. You are healing. And you are whole. 
sit with your divine precious self for another moment. And know, sense, and feel the inner peace that comes from being connected to your highest self. Thank your divine precious self for their wisdom and their beauty and their love. Feel yourself open to and embrace the understanding that this highest self is always there within. Always ready to share their wisdom, beauty, and love. When you are ready, you are going to bring yourself into the room, holding the sacred inner space, comforted by the knowledge that you can always visit this space and commune with and communicate with your divine self, source, all that is, God, goddess, great mystery, creator, of all that is, was, and ever will be. So we thought that um, as a way to renew our, our practice, our spiritual practices, that we would do a ritual where we invite you to come forth to the altar and receive and take a gift of a candle and an incense for you to take home. And then we invite you to time and time. <laughs> and to say, I commit to communicating with Source, or any var variation thereof that you want to say. But it would be this of being, I now commit to communicating with Source. And then I would take a candle and an incense so that when you go home, you can continue the communication with Source. I now commit to communicating every day with Source. I commit single day communicating with the source.
I commit every day to communicate daily with the source. I now commit to communicating every day with the source. I now, <clears throat> I now commit to communicating daily with source. I commit daily with the soul to communicate with the soul. Here's my commitment to maintain constant conscious contact. I commit and I keep in communication with our sorrows every day. <laughs> commit to communicating daily with the source. I commit to communicate daily with the source. Commit communicating daily with the love of source. This reminds me of Green Man. Every time
come and see him. And I see this as also a source. Yeah. Isn't that the most beautiful mural yeah. you ever saw in your life? Uh. <laughs> Thank you, James. <laughs> Thank you, James. He passed uh, almost a year ago. What an artist. So in a spirit of gratitude, um, I'm going to play one of my favorite songs right here from Godspell. And we're going to pass this basket and um, we are self-supporting here. We pay rent. One temple pays rent to Serenity Room. Serenity Room is gracious enough to give us this space. And so in that spirit of gratitude and abundance, we accept your donation, anything you can give. It's the land, in this land and water, by God's almighty hand. He sent the snows in winter, warm to swell the rain. The breezes and the sunshine, and so on refreshing. We're going to just make a couple of announcements, and um, um, the, after I talk about the Oneness Temple and Kirtan, which I had said earlier, we meet here the last Friday of the month, 7.30 to 9-ish, and we do the same sort of sacred celebration like this. We do a sacred dialogue. It's always a different theme, but it's pretty much the same structure, and we also do the first and the third um, Wednesday of every month, Kirtan which is, it starts at nine o'clock. And we do a lot of Hindu chants, uh, mostly, but you know, sometimes we throw in a couple of other kind of songs. And, and jazzy uh, Hindu chants. And dance. it's very jazzy, it's a jazzy <laughs> Hindu thing, rock thing, slash thing. Very cool. Raise your hand if you've been to Kirtan here. Yes, and, and it's really wonderful. And it helps raise the vibration. And sometimes, you know, you really feel tired and you don't really want to come out at that late hour, but you're always so happy that you're here. So, again, I want to say thank you for the graciousness of the Serenity Room and Salah, who uh, opens up his heart and lets us 
have this space, and so we really so much appreciate. He's going to talk a little bit about Carmageddon, which is coming up, Carmageddon 2012. And okay. it's really important right. that we try to uh, come out for this event. Oh, yeah. Uh, Carmageddon, and what, what a weird name, right? Uh, well, we're just, we were just playing on words. There was a lot of talk about the Armageddon and, and the end of the world and the Mayan calendars and uh, what else? Planet X is going to hit our planet and uh, <laughs> polar shifting. And you know, remember all that stuff that's been going on for you, pro probably before I was even born. Halley's Comet and what was that? Uh, Y2K, right? All this stuff. It seems like there's a lot of things that we thrive on fear. And, um, and I've been looking around, I've been talking to a lot of light workers and, and spiritual leaders and community leaders, and I've been watching what's going on. And I saw a lot of people are, are, are planting those karma seeds around. They're, sh they're, they're, they're causing a karmic shift. They're changing the karma of, of our world. So the world, is the world going to end? I believe it's going to end. But instead of having Armageddon, we're going to have a Carmageddon. Because a lot of good things are happening. So just to honor all those people, and last, last year we started this uh, the global movement. And uh, we've been Im inviting and honoring all the people in the community that are uh, creating their karmic shift, that are planting the, the, the uh, seeds of karma, um, and of course, uh, Reverend Dr. Telesco was one of them that was here, was honored. So every other week or so, we invite a community uh, or a spiritual leader or a light worker to come, and we have like a potluck dinner, uh, and we, we do an interview and we post online. On, it's on the website, karmageddon2012.org. And afterwards, we have a little party. You know, it could be like a curtain or a drum circle or a dance or whatever people offer, you know, or a practice or a meditation. Uh, the main event, however, is going to be on October 20th. We reserved T.Y. Park for that. We're hoping to have uh, thousands of people showing up. And uh, it's, we're gonna have, we have seven pavilions there. Uh, and, and the tickets are out on sale. Interested, their tickets. Um, I still have that link there. I had a, I had a, a, a cut off time, but I kept, I kept it. If for every ticket that you buy online, you get an extra ticket for free. And the tickets online are only twelve dollars, and, and if you buy them at door, they're fifteen. And it's not really about making money or anything; just about covering the cost and, and honoring all these people in the community. Let them know and let you know that uh, you're not alone. There are many of us who are doing that. And it's not a new concept that's been going around. So if you know anyone, just honor them in your own way. You don't have to wait to come to an event here and do this. Just honor people in your life. And you don't have to be gurus or doctors, or you don't have to be anything. It could be anyone that's causing that shift. It could be that, uh, you know, the little guy that pushes your shopping cart and, and smiles at Publix, for example, that makes, makes you feel wonderful the rest of the day. You know, uh, that, that old lady, the neighbor, that just, just uh, smiles when she sees you. Could be anybody, you know. Uh, it could be any of us. Uh, uh, one of my favorite sayings, and I didn't invent this one, it, it says that we're, we're all mystics, because uh, mystics are not different kind of human beings, but every human being is a different kind of a mystic. So just find the mystic in you. I would encourage you to come away. We had a... We had, we had scheduled the next Karmic Gannon uh, uh, honoree was, was going to be uh, three people, the elders from the Native American community, and one of them got, had a stroke, and the other one, had to, his mother is sick, and he had to go travel and get it. So we shift, changed the time twice, but I'm hoping uh, uh, two weeks from today we're going to have we're going to have him here. I'm hoping. Uh, some of the people that have been honored, uh, Dr. Carmen Farah, She's been termed the Queen of Karma. She wrote books on uh, karma. She's been on the view and everything. Uh, uh, Rabbi Mark Ladoitz was here. Of course, Dr. Talisco was here. Uh, Dr. Pearson. Uh, Asher West. Uh, and he's going to be at the event. Karina Sky. Uh, 
Oh, Dr. Uh, George Love, Javier Love, he's a doctor, medical chief on a license, a Florida physician, uh, and a lot of people. And if you know someone that you feel that they need to be honored, just let me know and we'll invite them and we'll have a party. Uh, what else? Serenity Room is uh, like, it's, we're a nonprofit, and uh, we could use all the help that we can get. And, and I really appreciate that you guys are here just to help and support this place. And thanks for my sister here. So October 20th, T.Y. Park. When this temple will be there. When this temple will be there. ISIS will be there. ISIS mm -hmm. will be there. The International Seminary for Interfaith Studies will be there. And Sponsoring. One of our sponsors. One of our sponsors. Yes. And, um, and ISIS, the International Seminary for Interfaith Studies, is ex still accepting applications for the fall class. Go ahead and say that. All right, so let's, we're going to have a uh, closing chant. Mm -hmm. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Okay. And so we're going to ask for this, we're invoking peace, and we're invoking peace from this one source, from the divine source. And we say it three times, Shanti Shanti Shanti. The reason we say it three times, the first Shanti is to bless and give peace <coughs> and invoke peace in the unknown realm. The next moment that hasn't unfolded yet. That place where there's fear in us of the unknown. So we invoke peace and we ask for peace in that place. The second Shanti, the second peace, is invoking peace in our circle. In our current circle here, in our circle of all of our relations, all of our interactions, those who we love, our loved ones, our neighborhood, our state, our country, our planet, our universe, this galaxy, all that is known. And the third and final peace is for peace within. The peace within, which is what we are all really searching for, this inner peace. So let this chant be our prayer. And it's a call and response. I'm going to count on my kirtanists for help. Yes.
Oh, my. <laughs> Music, right? So long. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Put some dance. Oh, you got it. You got it. You got it. You got it. <laughs> Go wash my hands. <laughs> You're drinking a lot of water. Phone. 